So the first question we ask ourselves today is what is artificial intelligence and what is machine learning? Artificial intelligence is a field of computer science which makes a computer system mimicking human intelligence. So it comprised of two works, artificial and intelligence, which means a human-made thinking uh, power um, organized by a machine. Machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence which enables machine to learn from past data or experiences without being explicitly programmed. We can see three different machine learning types. Supervised learning, where we supervise the algorithm. Reinforcement learning, where we will reinforce the learning that will occur when, uh, when you present the algorithm with examples. And then unsupervised learning, where an algorithm learns from plain examples without any associate response from humans. So the second question that we asked uh, ourselves today is what are the key practical examples of the use of artificial intelligence in medical day-to-day -day practice? And yes, it's being used extensively already. The first use is obviously search capability as we see in Google search for instance, but now there is algorithms that are able to do very deep uh, search on specific elements like electronic data records and being able to really present this information to the practitioner. The second one is everything related to vision, the capability to record video or image that are then being used to enhance the diagnostic of, of patient. It can be done, for instance, for visual analysis and automatic detection of tumor, tumoral tissues, can be done by uh, doing 3D countering techniques for the preparation of a cancer patient before radiotherapy treatment. It's also being used today, every day, by people that are doing PCR tests for COVID-19 that are using visual uh, instrumentations that is able to decode the ARN uh, of the virus itself or, or to decode DNA of other uh, elements of living cells. The third uh, subcategory is what we call speech, is the capability to create uh, interaction between a human and a machine through voice. Uh, all the, the voice automated assistants like Siri, Cortana, Alexa, Amazon Echo, Google Assistant uh, can now be embedded also in a, in, in a clinic, for instance. Amazon Echo did, did that already uh, to be able to continue interacting with COVID-19 patients that are in ICU rooms. Um, the fourth cognitive capability is what we call language, is, uh, uh, is the ability to, um, to translate, uh, for instance, specific information set automatically, uh, medical information set into another language. Uh, allowing a better multilingual communication in an healthcare context between doctors and patients. Uh, so several applications uh, already exist, uh, like Medibabble, for instance, of withcanopy.com that allows to automatically translate medical terms from English to Spanish to enhance the capability of the practitioner with their patients. And last but not least, the fifth uh, big category of cognitive uh, capability of uh, artificial intelligence is what we call decisions. Decisions is a field of artificial intelligence related to the creation of decision trees by correlating different sets of information. This includes advanced decision model for medical practice, which, which allow medical professionals to automate supports uh, on diagnostics in real time by correlating historical and real time information. So this is really the future of diagnostics, being able to record uh, under strict privacy rule, of course, the, the discussion between the practitioner and the patient itself. The artificial intelligence will then retrieve the information uh, through the el electronic data record of the patient and will be able to, to extract and give some uh, support and decision to the practitioner in terms of uh, what is the potential um, disease that this 
person has. Uh, the symptoms that he expressed, does it relate to uh, something that he had in the past, yes or no? So it's a, it's a way to automate the anamnesis and the diagnostics of a patient in real time. If it's done well with sufficient information set, it might be useful, but it's obviously only a complement to the human-to-human -human interaction, in my view. The third question that we will ask ourselves is, what are the key practical AI and machine learning trends for pharma and medtech companies regarding research and development? So from research and development to real life evidence uh, and to production and commercial commercialization of uh, molecules or uh, medtech device, artificial intelligent techniques are now being used and are now invading all sphere of the value chain of, of, of those corporations. Why? Because clinical research and drug discovery is increasingly complex. As in-depth comprehension of those uh, pathologies and the analysis of the potential existing compound or new synthesized compounds require massive amount of data. So the complexity is increasing. The, the, the science uh, and the data science associated with it is increasing as well. So you need uh, massive amount of compute and storage capability and, and data science model to make sure and to make sense out of all those data and being able to accelerate uh, the, the research process. So those data sets are related to very different universe as well. So you have list of compounds of collection for which no primary or secondary assay have been realized. Um, full new design, de novo, based on protein ligand research with full biomolecular analysis of the protein structure, including genomics and proteomics data. So this field is, is burgeoning and is, is, uh, is growing very fast. And this is why we are seeing a lot of development also in immunology now, understanding better the uh, biomolecular implication of, of, those, uh, of, those, um, of those elements, including, for instance, the creation of antibodies that would block specific antigens, as we see today in COVID-19. So yes, research and development really requires now massive amount of data and they need uh, very specific big data analytics and artificial intelligence tool to, uh, to be successful. The first question that we ask ourselves today is what are the key practical AI machine learning trends for pharmaceutical and medtech companies regarding the production uh, of small chemical or, or long uh, living cell molecule production. Artificial intelligence and machine learning start to have a real direct incidence on how molecules and medical technologies are being produced and commercialized. Uh, first example is, is uh, uh, how AI is being used to complement the creation of a digital twin for pharmaceutical production. Uh, by creating a digital twin of your existing production line of pharmaceutical corporation, you can represent digitally, so in a virtual manner, virtual world manner, how the production line will be or is operating physically in the real world. So this allows a significant improvement in terms of efficiency in the production, in terms of, of design, by allowing 3D representation of the new process line before you want to implement it optimization of the process in real time or near real time, allowing visual representation of the process flow that you have different uh, in, in your line of production, alerting when a disruption occurs in the process environment by looking at deviation from the standard process flow. So it's a, it's a very uh, interesting technique to better tune your production capability, avoid disruption, and also decrease the overall cost of production of uh, your uh, drugs or uh, medical te technology. The last question that we want to ask ourselves is, uh, and which is very key, is how do we make sure artificial intelligence answers to key ethical privacy principle if it's becoming more commonly used? 
Uh, when we speak about artificial intelligence in general, and even more in healthcare, uh, you know, the set, setup of ethical boundaries in its usage needs to be discussed. Several ethical frameworks have been developed across the world around the key principle. Uh, if you want to have a look at that, go to uh, uh, bsa.org, uh, for instance, which is a software alliance, which determines in EU, Australia, Japan, Singapore, and across the world, what are the key principles that are uh, now being defined for ethical use of artificial intelligence. It goes uh, about things like it needs to be human-centered, it needs to mitigate the risk and promote the benefits of the artificial intelligence. It needs to be fair, so fair uh, versus specific group of the population, gender, type of people. Um, explainability, so you need to be able to explain how the artificial intelligence will work in a specific context. Uh, you need to maintain privacy and security associated to that. Uh, uh, related to anonymiz anonymization of, of the, re the, the specific data of the people itself. Uh, safety of reliability, of course. Um, it needs to be, you need to be accountable. So the people that will use this algorithm needs to be accountable for the results that they have. Um, it needs also to, uh, uh, to do a proportionate recommendation related to the data that that the artificial intelligence is using um, so also what is very important is understanding that in healthcare you have also uh, principles ethical principles that are very strong and uh, which are well recognized ethical medical principles um, in, and it's recognized across the world for instance, autonomy, people have the right to control what happens to their bodies. Uh, beneficence, all healthcare providers must strive to improve their patient else, not to do and to do the most good for the patient in every situation. Non-maleficence, first do not harm, uh, which is the bedrock of medical ethics. Then justice, the force principle demands that you should try to be as fair as possible when offering treatments to patients and allocating scare medical resources. Today, and based on my personal research, there is not a lot of combination of those purely medical ethical principles that have been defined for decades and the new principles for artificial intelligence. So uh, uh, an enormous work still needs to be realized by, by public bodies to, uh, to, congre to aggregate those two principles together and create something that would be a charter for artificial intelligence. So as a conclusion, artificial intelligence and machine learning have deep and, and profound impacts on all healthcare providers and drug and medtech manufacturers deal with their patient today and will deal with their patient tomorrow. Artificial intelligence machine learning models are based on the quality of their and the relevance of the set of data. So it's very important that anyone using AI tools understand the limitation of the outcome uh, when they use AI tools. And this is even more true in the context of healthcare. Nevertheless, the capabilities given by AI to further support human health are so massive, so great, that humanity should clearly harness its power, in my, in my view, while respecting very key principles. So in a nutshell, AI for health has the capability to be transformational for all stakeholders, by uh, meaning the patient, by giving them more in-depth control of their own healthcare parameters through signals, uh, that they can measure themselves. Medical professionals, by making them more efficient in diagnostic of their patient, in the, the ongoing patient care, but also in the administrative task, uh, in, in making it more optimized. Pharma and medtech corporation as well will profit by boosting their innovation pipeline, by accelerating their research environment. And payers, governments and insurance company by creating more preventative healthcare tools to decrease the overall costs for the patient themselves and for the community at large. 
So AI is caring for your health today and will care even more for your health in the future. Thank you for watching. So thank you everyone for watching my video today. I really tried to uh, vulgarize a bit some of, of, of the concept of artificial intelligence in an healthcare domain. I hope you appreciated it. Uh, if you have any question, please, uh, please email me. It's bruno.denis1 at outlook.com. And I would be very pleased to, to receive your feedback to ameliorate myself on, on the next video and on the next webcast. So thank you so much for watching and have a great day for that.